Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about the smallest black hole I've discovered. Specifically about a black hole that is essentially at the limit of how small black holes can get. And we're going to put it in our solar system and find out how small it really is. Welcome to What The Math. So what you're looking at right now is actually a real-time representation of what one of the smallest black holes in our galaxy looks like. I'm going to change color scheme a little bit just so you can see that it's also very, very bright. Now, I'm, I'm sorry for those of you who might be photosensitive, but basically what you're seeing here is a tremendously powerful but also very, very small black hole that is generating such a huge, huge uh, energy here by... Uh, essentially vibrating and by essentially spinning the accretion disk around it ridiculously fast. And what it does is it produces uh, what's known as QPO, also known as quasi-periodic oscillations. Now you can actually see them from this distance, if I dim this a little bit. You see how it starts vibrating just a little bit. It's actually really, really fast. And this is what we can use uh, in astronomy to actually detect the mass and in essence, the size of a black hole. The faster it vibrates, the faster this QPO is in terms of frequency, the smaller the black hole. And this is essentially how we discovered uh, one of the smallest black holes ever discovered, and possibly even the smallest, known as XTE J1650-500. This is actually not it. This, is, uh, this particular black hole is something I've talked about previously, is kind of uh we're okay we're not really sure what it is we don't we don't even know if it's a black hole because the recent estimates for its mass uh show that it's about 2.1 uh masses of sun and this means that it might not be a black hole we might have been just actually wrong about this uh this is an object known as gro j0422 uh plus 32. we're going to take a look at another one here the object by the name of xd j1650-500 uh, this is actually a black hole for sure. As a matter of fact, it's a black hole that has a companion and uh, they obviously orbit around one another. So here you can actually see both of them. Uh, if we accelerate time a little bit, you'll see how they start moving around each other and create quite an interesting dance. Um, now, the interesting thing about this particular black hole is that uh, we've measured this particular object, which is actually right here, uh, quite uh, precisely. We, we know that its mass is uh, approximately 3.8 masses of the Sun, and we know that its size is about uh, 24 kilometers in diameter. Although in the game right now it's about 23. That's maybe a little bit off. We also know that this particular black hole is uh, definitely one of the smallest in terms of limits and it's actually very close to the theoretical limit of the mass which is about 2.7 but we still haven't really confirmed it because we haven't found enough black holes to um, to estimate this limit. In theory though, uh, at 2.7 to 2.8 masses, a black hole should really be a neutron star, not a black hole. So what I wanted to do in this video actually is to put this thing into our solar system and compare its size to other objects in our solar system just to demonstrate how tiny it really is. And we're going to do this by going to our own solar system in Universe Unbox Square and place this unusually small but very, very massive black hole right here in the orbit of Jupiter around uh, one of its moons, around Io. I thought it was a cool moon to add a black hole to, so, so I decided to add it right here. And as you can kind of see, in terms of size, it's actually not that big at all. It's actually really, really small. And it already started breaking something apart as soon as I placed it. Now let's actually compare it to other objects in our solar system by going to charts and selecting things by radius. And obviously the most uh, large in terms of size is Jupiter. Then as we start going down the list, we'll discover where Earth is. And eventually we'll start uh, hitting things like dwarf planets, planemos, and eventually asteroids. And as you can probably guess, we have to go down the list quite a lot before we find this black hole. As a matter of fact, as I keep scrolling down the list here, there it is. It is actually no uh, larger than 
a relatively small sized asteroid. So it's right here between uh, two, uh, I think these are actually moons. One, uh, one of them is a moon at least, Ananki and what's the other one called? Adrastea. So both of these are moons. And um, this is about eight kilometers in radius. This is about 14. And right between them is XTE J1650-500. But it's also uh, in the list of asteroids. So some of these are actually asteroids. Now, this is very, very interesting because this thing only being the size of an asteroid possesses more mass than the entire solar system altogether. And you'll witness this in a few seconds as soon as I basically zoom in to Jupiter right here and uh, let go of my pause button because right now the game is actually paused. And as soon as we, as soon as we do this, uh, you'll see that this unusually massive black hole it's going to start uh, destroying things really, really fast. This is uh, this is actually almost in real time. Let me just see. Yeah, this is maybe eight times quicker than real time. Eight seconds per second. So it destroyed Io really, really quick. Io is gone. The next on the list is well, it's actually Jupiter. Even though Jupiter is so massive, it's most likely not going to survive for very long against this unusually massive black hole. Now, I know it's a little bit dark here, but if I move from this angle, you'll see that things will start moving to, toward this black hole pretty quickly. There is that uh, Adraste we saw a few uh, seconds ago. It's moving toward the object at several thousand kilometers per second. Jupiter is doing the same thing. It's already at thousand kilometers per second. And as you can see, the tidal effects of this tiny black hole start breaking it apart pretty quickly. It only took just under a minute for a Jupiter to move several thousand kilometers toward the black hole and basically get completely sucked into it. And so the entire solar system is actually going to follow Jupiter and it's most likely going to basically get absorbed by this black hole and you'll notice that pretty much everything is going to start moving toward the black hole in the next few minutes. Uh, you can kind of see by the vectors of velocity where things are moving. Some of the things are not being absorbed, they actually get thrown out uh, because they actually pass by just a little bit off uh, where the black hole is. And so this gives them a huge, huge boost, huge slingshot to basically escape the solar system now. So uh, Metis, for example, is now most likely going to escape. And so are these guys here moving at like 3,000 kilometers per second. So let's accelerate this just a little bit to see what uh, this super tiny black hole causes and what it actually creates in our solar system. And here with orbits enabled, it's actually kind of cool to see how pretty much everything in our solar system starts changing orbits really, really quickly. And as you can see, it, it sort of starts doing so much math that my computer can barely handle it. Uh, I'm going to have to decelerate the game just a little bit as it sort of recalculates all of the orbits in our solar system and pretty much everything assumes an orbit around this black hole. It's now pretty much the center of uh, the solar system. So even the sun is actually in orbit around this black hole. And some things here have a very, very elliptical orbit. Some things kind of start getting orbits that take them outside of the solar system. And all of this is due to the fact that even though it's so tiny, only about 11 kilometers in radius, which is maybe the size of a really large city on Earth. The mass here is 3.8 times the mass of the sun and essentially the mass of the total entire solar system because sun basically possesses about 99% of the mass in our solar system. So um, after only a few months, pretty much everything here will be in orbit, but I really want to see what happens to our sun actually because it does seem like it's actually accelerating towards the black hole. And if it comes close enough to the black hole, it might actually get shredded apart and create a very, very large uh, accretion disk and tons and tons of energy around this black hole. So let's see if it actually happens because I think it is moving there. Yeah, it's definitely moving toward the black hole. As a matter of fact, it's moving really, really fast toward the black hole as I just realized. So I might need to decelerate time just a little bit so we can see all of this happen in real time. Here comes the sun, very quickly, 
and it, it, this is going to be absolutely gorgeous to see how this black hole shreds the sun apart into tiny little pieces. And we've actually observed this at least once in real life, when a star approached the black hole relatively close and basically ended up getting shredded apart. And this tiny little speck is going to basically cause the destruction of our solar system. And here we go. We're right inside of it, and now basically there's nothing else left. Well, that's kind of it. That's really all I wanted to do in this video. I didn't really expect to destroy the solar system in such a spectacular manner, but it happened. At least we created a very large accretion disk, lots and lots of energy here, and tremendous amount of X-rays and all kinds of other radiation being emitted by this beautiful black hole. Anyway, that's all I wanted to do in this video. Now you know how small the smallest black hole we've ever discovered is, and hopefully you know a little bit more about our universe and space as well. Do subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye. And maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon to help me make better high quality videos. I'll see you later, bye bye.